I'm Andrew Watson. Thanks for tuning in once again to my guitar blog. It is Thursday, August 18th, 2011. And uh, today we're going to be going through a question that was sent in to the uh, website from Parker. He lives in Surrey, BC, and he basically wants to know what's exactly going on with the line level and instrument level switches on his preamp. So first of all, let's begin this whole discussion with a basic understanding of something very popular, especially in uh, audio editing suites, uh, called decibels, usually listed as dB. Now, this means basically that it's the level of a signal, and signal levels respond to increases or decreases that's actually quite directly related to the type of signal for a specific type of equipment or device that you're using. So. Uh, before I lose anybody on that, for instance, um, typical audio applications uh, include um, instrument level, microphone level, and something called line level. Now, uh, let's start with microphones, even though that's not going to be the huge part of our topic, but they are great to discuss because they really fall into this uh, whole concept very well. So microphones tend to have a very low output level. And what I'm talking about here are dynamic mics, not powered mics. So not those microphones like condenser mics that use phantom power off a mixing board or microphones that might have, you know, like a nine volt battery in them. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the basic dynamic microphones uh, that uh, have essentially no power source. They have a drop down off them of about minus 60 decibels. Now, <clears throat> that's kind of a generalization. It could be less, could be more. But basically, you're looking at a huge signal loss off of those. So most often times uh, with those, we have mic preamps that we use, and they provide the high gain so that we can boost the mic's output to correctly interface or match with a, a mixing console, say. Now, um, if you're not too familiar with what decibels are all about and how that impacts uh, uh, the, let's say an audio track, for instance, I would highly recommend going to your favorite uh, audio editing suite and taking any audio clip and start dropping it or boosting it in different decibels. Like maybe try uh, dropping it by 10 dB. You'll notice something like 10 dB drop on a typical audio track that's always also uh, you know been mixed and mastered. That's going to be a pretty significant signal loss. So I think it's good to kind of have a bit of an idea of where you're at with decibels because they play a a huge role uh, in uh, all this concept that we're discussing here. But let's move on to the whole world of instrument levels because that's kind of the focus of uh, Parker's question here. So instrument levels, like a guitar, uh, we have a drop on those. So the native uh, output of this is about minus 20 decibels. So the guitar uh, preamp needs to bring up the guitar's native level to a flat position, which would just basically be um, labeled on most audio software as zero decibels. And zero decibels is, as you probably guessed it, that's line level. So this is why the typical pedal boards and stomp boxes have that instrument level switch. And um, that switch basically brings up the native guitar level uh, to zero decibels from minus 20 decibels. Now, if you're running a pedal through a rack system, you've got to remember rack systems are designed to operate at line level. So there is zero decibels. So your pedal board needs to be set at line level. And within your rack system, you wouldn't want a guitar preamp in line. Um, if you've ever tried that, you probably experienced some pretty uh, severe clipping. And if you, um, you know, have, let's say, a guitar preamp that you want to use in your rack mount system, it's always best to have what's called an AB switch. Make sure you get one that's FET. Do some research about those switches because otherwise you get a really loud snap or a pop when you're changing channels. So make sure you get the AB switch uh, that's called FET. They're very quiet, basically. And that'll allow you to go back and forth to keep a better sounding signal chain. And kind of that's basically what it's all about. So you have to remember, you know, in audio work, it's very important to match all your levels correctly to prevent your devices uh, from your, you know, your nemesis out there, which is clipping. You know, you, you don't want to, your signal path to be too hot, especially in this day and age of everything being so digital. So just to recap, uh, that instrument level switch is bringing up a 20 decibel or 20 dB boost, and line level means that you're at zero dB, and uh, basically that's the scoop on, uh, on that stuff. So hopefully that helps you out, Parker. Hopefully it helps out with a few other people. And again, that's about all the time that I have for today. So thanks for watching. Thanks for sending in all the great questions. Uh, have yourself a great rest of the week there, and I will catch up with you next time. Bye for now.